Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer, welcome back to American Truck Simulator, and welcome back to San Rafael, California. Is that right? That is right, that is definitely right. Right, so you can see the Viper 389 has patched up to 1.33. Oh, timing, timing, you're so good to me. There goes the booze train, the wine train, fantastic. So the Viper 389 has patched up to 1.33, and the cool thing about this truck, tell you what, let's hop in here. Let's get a move on. The cool thing about this truck is it's uh, it's not very expensive. It's only about a hundred grand all kitted out, and we had to replace it. So we sold the. So you remember we had this, we had this truck, and we lost it when the game went to 1.33. They replaced it with, the game replaced it with a Kenworth W900. We just left it in there. So now when I rebuilt this truck, it only cost me about a hundred grand, like 125,000. But we were able to sell that Kenworth for like 80,000. And we've got plenty of money. So it all worked out. It all worked out. And I said last episode, we were gonna get rid of our owned trailers and take some heavier cargoes. The only thing going out of San Rafael is really heavy. So we're taking 121,000 pounds from San Rafael to Eureka with the pilot cars. So this will be fun. And now you're saying to yourself, well, maybe, maybe you're saying to yourself, it will. Uh, why is there a truck vid on a Thursday? Isn't it a farm vid? Well, the farm vid was yesterday. And then you're like, uh, it will. Why was there a farm vid on Wednesday? Isn't that the train? And I would say, yeah, but the train is going to drop a new DLC for Friday. It's going to drop tomorrow, Thursday. I'll record it Thursday, and then it will post Friday morning. So, you see, it's been just kind of a jibber-jabber week. And I was thinking about doing MotoGP. There you go. We know how to do that. I was thinking about doing MotoGP. And uh, off topic, by the way, I am going to leave the mini map on because this truck doesn't have a GPS at least with this interior it doesn't so I was gonna do a Moto GP race man you know what I always talk to you about gaming I always talk to you about gaming I'm gonna talk to you about gaming right now and I just thought of something else no no I'll leave it on I'll leave it on I was thinking I could turn the mini map off but for the moment I'm gonna leave it on Get us through here. I know, I know. Breaking the immersion. There's the booze train again. A lot of boozing going on in the wine country today. So I was going to do a MotoGP race and post it one day early. And what had happened was... God, I love this truck. I'm so glad it's, it's working again. I'm glad that it's working... Uh, I know, I know, we got like three topics in the air right now. I'm glad that it's working in 1.33, but I'm glad that it's working at all because for the longest time, I could not use this truck on account of the frame rate drops. But right now, we're at uh, about 55 FPS actually looking in a mirror. And that was the, the biggest problem, was the mirrors in this truck. So, MotoGP 18, um, I thought about, oh, there goes my voice, I thought about doing a race today and I got everything fired up and a couple of weird things happened oh man all right let me back up even a step further so ride three made by milestone which is the company that makes MotoGP 18 MotoGP is a MotoGP sim ride three is just a regular kind of street bike and race bike sim and I had ride two it's good but it's like uh sir it's uh it's kind of an arcade game Please keep the cargo between the escort vehicles. Okay, so he wants me over here. All right, I hear you, buddy, with your little, your little talking radio. So, I have Ride 2. It's cool, it really is, but it's, a, it's an arcade game. It's not, I wouldn't call it much of a sim. I'm trying to pivot here, and we ain't pivoting. Come on. I 
I know, I know. So, it's it's fun though. It's definitely a fun game, but it's not a sim. So, Ride 3 dropped, and I heard not so good things about it. I heard that they had taken out a lot of bikes. I heard that, uh, yeah, I just heard it wasn't very good, but it is running on Unreal 4, as MotoGP 18 is. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't just wasn't in the mood to make a mistake with a sim, with a game. But then I ended up getting it, right? I did get it, and it's actually really, really good. And it is missing some bikes, but this is one of those things where that's... Uh, maybe we could say that's a little nitpicky, because it has a bunch of other bikes added. So I think there's 240 motorcycles represented. You know, eh, eh. It's not, you can't really say it's missing anything. Maybe it doesn't have some things included that were in Ride 2. But, I mean, I heard people saying, oh, it's just a cash grab. They're going to release those bikes as, uh, as DLC. They're just trying to jam us. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. Concentrating. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. Uh, you know, it's a business. Business is uh, business. Oh, really? Oh no, we can go through this. We a boss. Oh, but this is uh okay, moment please. This is a little uh is this gonna be okay? Yeah, it's gonna be okay. But I do feel like I need to turn my lights on. There we go. Oh Jesus. Am I am I I think am I bright on? No, oh, wow, those are some really bright lights, damn. Right, so I got Ride 3, and it's really cool. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. And Milestone has some issues with, oh well, a couple of things. <laughs> and one of them is controller support, but it's a cool game. It's a cool game. So, before I got it, I was watching somebody play it online. A really good gamer named Robbo46. Check him out if you're into motorcycle games. And he's very active with... Uh, the engine braking, he does MotoGP 18 vids too, he's very active with the engine braking and the TCS. And now me, I run helmet cam, well not, not I mean when I say helmet cam you think of like a camera on a helmet, I, I don't know how to describe it, it's like, it's not first person, it's like first person in the helmet, so it's got the little, you know, kind of blacked out areas around the side to represent the helmet, so it's a really limited view. And you can see the instrument cluster in both Ride 3, well, Ride 2, Ride 3, and MotoGP 18. You can see the instruments. You can see the panel, but I don't run with the HUD. I'm sort of anti-HUD. It pulls me out of the immersion. And, God, visibility in this truck is not good. But, you know, my bro drives a 389. Drives a Peterbilt 389. And first time he saw one of my videos, I was like, yeah, the visibility is terrible, and he's like, yeah, that's that's accurate, that's for real. Visibility in that truck sucks. So, uh, once again, off topic. Anyway, he's very active in the HUD with the traction control and the, the engine braking, and since I don't run the HUD, it got me to thinking. So first in Ride 3, I fired up the HUD, and sure enough, I don't know why Milestone has it set up this way, but sure enough, the game keeps defaulting to like max traction control. So I went ahead and turned it off in ride three and wowzers. Definitely changes how fast the bike is. I was able to bump the AI up a good 10%. You gotta be kind of uh, judicious with that throttle cause it'll step out on you, but it really, really accelerates much faster. So that is a cool thing. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. I wonder if this applies to MotoGP 18 as well. So the race this week was at the Saxon Ring. That's in Germany. It's at the Saxon Ring, and it's pouring rain, of course. Side topic to our side topic. It seems to rain a lot in MotoGP 18. I have the weather set to random, and I swear it rains like every other race. Not exaggerating. It's kind of kooky, I have to say. I, I mean, I know Europe in the summertime, it does rain. It doesn't rain that much. It's not Cambodia. Good grief. Anyway, pouring rain for, for 
all the free practice and for qualifying. I qualified on the pole by one tenth of a second, which is perfect for me. It tells me I got my AI set just right. But then, but then, it put me at the back of the pack. I don't know why it did that. I mean, clearly something happened in qualifying, but I don't know what exactly. It didn't give me a warning or tell me or anything. No, I think what may have happened, because I qualify and then I go to the pit and I watched the other times come in and sometimes I'll accelerate time. I feel like you can, if you don't wait till qualifying has completely cycled through before you hit the proceed button, it can sometimes not register qualifying. But the game is a little bit buggy, I have to say. Anyway, I qualified on the pole, then it put me at the back of the pack. So as the race started, uh, and I've been messing with this in free practice, but as the race started, I was able to, to, because I had the HUD on, I was able to get to the traction control, turn it down, and I did that race in the rain with traction control and engine braking off, and I did go from worst to first, which normally I would say, okay, I gotta, I gotta jack the AI a little bit, but the AI is just terrible in rain, so you can, you can put moves on the AI in rain that you can't put it, you can't put those same kind of moves on the AI when it's dry, or at least I can. But I did win, and I made up some time. And what I was uh, made up some time, made up some, uh, made up a position in the championship points. I was in third. I'm in second now. I'm five points back from the lead, round nine. So we've got ten races to go, and I feel like I could do this. Uh, do I want to? I want to say uh, Lorenzo is in first, and he finished really, really badly in this race because he was significantly further out in front in the points, but I feel like he really didn't get many points in the Saxonburg race at all. Like, if I had come P1 and he had come P2, I don't know that I would have made up that many that many points on him. I, I think I would have gained the same position to go from third to second in the points, but I don't think I would have caught him like that. Like, he would have stayed in first, but I don't think... Yeah. I think I, I really jumped in the points. So I think I could win the championship, maybe. It's going to take uh, a lot of focus and concentration, but uh, what the hell was I talking about? Why did I mention that? What was Where was I going with that? What was my point? Oh, man. I, I swear I'm getting dumber. Anyway, oh, I remember. So messing with that little traction control and engine braking menu while you're in a race is like it's crazy hard. And the way that I have everything set up, like I'm never far from from anything. Like either the pain train is right behind me, or I'm not in first place and I'm trying to pass somebody. But there's rarely many situations that I've seen on the track where you're like, oh yeah, I can just uh, you know check my email here. It's pretty pretty intense. So that is, I mean, I, I understand that there need to be gamepad controls to change settings in a race sim. I'm not saying that that's like a bad thing or that shouldn't be a thing. I'm just saying it's tricky for me to do it. But then on top of that, the control configuration, and this is a known issue in milestone games, the control configuration, like the bindings are really goofy and it says one thing in the menu when you set the controller up, but then the response when you're in the game is completely different. So it's like you would think, you would think that left to right on the D-pad moves the the field, right? So whether you want to be in engine braking or or traction control or whatever, left and right on the D-pad moves the field, and then up and down changes the value. That's a pretty standard setup. Well, oh no, it's not. It's it's like left and down move the field back and forth, and then right and up change the value. It is so counterintuitive, particularly when you're like, I mean, even just trying not to wreck, even just trying not to crash, in practice, it's tricky enough to do that. But then you throw in rain and a bunch of people trying to pass you, and it's like, man, I feel like I lost a bet. Anyway, that's a, that's a bit of a rant, but... I am significantly faster without the traction control, and I am going to sort of have to learn how to ride the bike a little differently because I've, I, I didn't want it. I thought, 
I had traction control permanently turned off, but it defaults back to high every time you start a race or a practice or a qualifying. So it's a little little tricky. They're tricksters, those milestone people. They're they're very tricky. So that is what's going on with, with that race. But the reason I didn't record it, well, I did record it, but then when I reviewed it, it's I, just, I get off the front by about five seconds, and then I'm just basically turning hot laps. And that's the same thing that happens every time you race in the rain, or at least for me. I mean, I think if I... I could swap the AI settings every race. If it's raining, make it harder. If it's dry, make it easier so that there would always be the same kind of differential or we'd always be racing. I just feel like rain races are not, it's like the AI can't handle rain in MotoGP 18. All right, so that's MotoGP 18. Um, in this sim that we're in right now, ATS, the we're on 1.33.2S and I believe that means this is no longer beta and that this is a public release. And I read somewhere, it was a comment, it wasn't from the actual mod creator, but I read in the in the thread underneath this Viper 389 mod in the Steam Workshop, somebody said, when is 1.33 patch gonna come out? The, the Viper 389 patch for 1.33, and uh, somebody else responded, not the mod developer, I'm being very specific about that. This is just a random citizen said he doesn't, release any updates until the game is out of beta and the, the I don't know whatever the, the code the number for the game that 1.33.2.s is new and that happened I don't know yesterday maybe the day before so it could be that the game is out of beta at least for 1.33 and so the developer went and went ahead and patched this truck so that is super cool um, I'm trying to think what else uh, ETS, I assume, will be coming out of 1.33 beta soon. And I'm hoping that ProMods patches up pretty soon as well, but that'll be done when it's done. That's a massive project. I can't imagine how difficult it is for them to keep that mod up to date as SCS continues patching ETS. So that's what's going on there. And then sort of big news is Farm Sim has patched up to 1.2. Or, if you'd like to use slightly different language, Farm Simulator 19 was just released because it looks like 1.2 is what the game should have been when it was released uh, three weeks ago. You know, it is what it is. It's, uh, that's just how, how it works. I mean, Giants is a fairly small studio, and they dropped the ball. It happens. You know who else just dropped the ball? effing Bethesda, right? One of the biggest, most prestigious and richest game developers and then Bethesda Publishing is one of the, the wealthiest game publishers, richest game publishers in the world. Biggest and baddest. Mother flipping Bethesda. And they totally dropped the ball with Fallout 76 and the things that people are saying about that game and the reviews that it's getting and, and it's just amazing. It happens in Hollywood, you know? Major studios hire a big time director and a bunch of stars and throw $200 million in a movie, and it's released, and it sucks, and everybody hates it. It happens, you know? And if it, if it can happen to Paramount, if it can happen to Sony, if it can happen to Bethesda, then it can happen to a smaller company like Giants. They drop the ball. But it looks like, as of today, it looks like they fixed it. So I'm going to take a look. We're all off schedule, and normally I would be recording a farm sim video right now and posting that today, and that would include the new stuff in 1.2, but it just didn't work out that way. So I'll do that. Uh, well, no, I can't do it tomorrow because I'm going to do train sim tomorrow. God, I just realized we're driving at night, and I like <laughs> really put an effort into not... Uh, I slept through the night. I woke up at noon. I really did not want to do a night video, sir. Okay, he's turning. Really did not want to do another night video, and yet, here we are. Here we are. So, I will do, uh, since I'm doing ATS today, and this is normally our Saturday video, maybe I will do 
farm sim on Saturday. And the, the change log for 1.2, I hope I haven't been saying 1.32, because it's not, for farm sim it's not 1.32, it's just 1.2. They had 1.1, like that was a day one patch. And then so on and so on. And 1.2, I think, is the like the big fix with all the, the bug reports that came in when they went to retail release three weeks ago. But uh, 1.2 is where we're at, and it looks like they fix a ton of things. And there's some stuff that, like, the sheep in my sheep meadow continue to feed themselves, which has been fantastic for my profitability, because all I need to do is, like, well, nothing. They feed themselves, and water is free, so they've just been making wool. You know what I'm saying? So apparently they, they fixed that. Apparently it will not rain in the vehicles anymore. We'll see. Uh, and there's uh, various other things, like mostly buggy stuff. But but I when I think of things like raining in the, in the vehicles, that to me is not a bug. That's like, it's been that way forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. Uh, now this is gonna get a little uh, a little dicey here okay he's going Jesus he's going now, I want to get over I do I don't know okay we're still two lanes I thought we were going to single lane each direction and I know I've gotten caught out a couple times where my rear pilot vehicle gets like trapped behind traffic and and the front pilot vehicle stops because it's waiting for somebody who just can't catch up However, oh wow, it's been a few few weeks, maybe a couple months since that happened. I was, uh, oh, what the hell happened? I got, did I get hit by a train? Something crazy happened and I, oh, there was traffic. Yeah, that's it. There was traffic and I ended up getting hit by a train. It, it was a whole big scene. And I got hit by a train because I was trying to get around traffic that was bugged out at a crossing or something. I can't remember. It's in the... No, it's not in the video. Yeah, because I, I recorded it, but then I I may have started cussing quite a bit, so I went ahead and deleted that. That's uh, that's not a family-friendly video. Anyway, uh, the traffic was bugged out. It was it was not moving, so I like tried all these crazy things, and I ended up getting hit by a train. But if that happens, all you need to do is is quit the game, right? Like go back to your profile, and then restart. And when you restart, the traffic will spawn in. The game doesn't start, the map doesn't start full of traffic. The traffic spawns in as you move. So had I spawned in again, all the traffic that was stuck at that level crossing would have been gone. So uh, same thing with uh, when the pilot car gets jammed up. Instead of uh, like trying to move heaven and earth, just quit the game. Or I think the other thing you can do is... Uh, Go into your settings and change like advanced coupling or something or trailer stability and that will like reload the, the physics and the textures and everything so that will essentially reload the traffic. Same thing but you don't have to go all the way out to the, the profile menu. So uh, yep I think that's all I got MotoGP 18 Ride 3. Ride 3 is good. Uh, if you're into motorcycle sim, if you're into racing sim it's definitely worth checking out. It's a little spendy I have to say. But it's worth it. I mean, maybe not two weeks before Christmas. Maybe uh, maybe it's more worth it in like January or February. But it's a it's a cool game, uh, cool sim. Definitely recommend it. That's in the Steam Store. Uh, MotoGP 18. Uh, it's a sim. That's I would call that a pure sim. Ride three. You can just uh, you know you can have a beer with your buddies and pass the controller around. MotoGP 18 is more like you know put the headphones on and, and light some incense and really focus on that for a couple hours. It's not a, I would not call that a casual game. It does have a quick mode, but that's, uh, that's a little bit more serious. And uh, Farm Sim and 1.33.2S patch. And yeah, I think that's just about everything that I had on my list. We're doing pretty good. I know these missions are, even in daylight, these missions are, I don't want to say boring, but, you know, try to mix it up a little bit. We've been spending a lot of time with the owned trailers. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to to kind of switch it up. And, of course, once again, we are driving at night. Now, I have a question, and you may have an answer for this. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know if, 
and it obviously couldn't happen on multiplayer because people are, are linking in from all over but in single player does this game adjust the daylight cycle to what the daylight cycle is in your in your real part of the world I mean it could only do that I guess if it was pulling like a geotag from your world of trucks account or something I don't know I wonder about that because it seems like it is nighttime a lot in this game like no matter how how uh, relentlessly I focus on on making a daytime video it just seems like it I don't want to say it defaults but it seems like it really is night a lot I don't know if you have thoughts on that or if you have any input or feedback if you know like what time it is with that situation please do let me know because I'm a bit I'm a bit baffled and I've said this like a thousand times in my videos I really do like driving at night so I have no problem with this but I know it makes for kind of a dark video so I do try to do daytime videos for you but for me man I could I could drive at night all the time I really do like this are those uh, airport lights over there those look like no those are just work lights like a refinery or something those look like the the lights that you see uh, I guess LAX is the best example that I know of but when you're on Sepulveda Boulevard and you drive sort of past LAX the approach comes right over Sepulveda so you've got like the piano keys are, are just to the left of the highway, like just to the left of the highway. It's like that, what is it, Martinique, that resort where the planes come right over the beach. Planes come over Sepulveda at, I don't know, probably 100 feet, 150 feet. And so if the piano keys are just to the left of the highway, just to the left of Sepulveda, then just to the right, you have all the marker lights and everything, uh, approach lights and all the focus lights and everything so though when those lights are on it just lights up that whole uh, kind of scrubby desert area to the right of Sepulveda it just lights it up like daylight even in the middle of the night so those had a similar look to them but then on closer examination it was just some floodlights in a in a industrial facility that's cool that's cool too so we are what time is it 1 a.m. Man, I swear it was like noon when I started this video. Oh, oh, you know what? Okay, I'll check this on replay. I wonder how long it takes them to hook up a big cargo like this, a special transport. Okay, I didn't even think about that because it takes an hour to load a regular box trailer or a regular flatbed. I wonder if it's like three or four hours it takes to get all this stuff set up, which would not make any logical sense and would sort of bust the immersion because... Really, a, a cargo like this would be prepped on the flatbed, right? Like the crew that, that lifts it onto the flatbed, loads it onto the flatbed, they could do all that whether there was anything hooked up to the trailer or not. I mean, they're probably a little yard tug or something to move it around their facility, but they wouldn't need me to be hooked up to it to load it. And they would, yeah, if it's a big... If it's a big yard they would inevitably have their own little tug to move trailers around so yeah that could all happen without me and then I would just pull in right hook up hook up the lines get my get my paperwork and off I'd go okay Tony is that legit is that how that would work so if it does take longer to load a special transport cargo I don't know that that's hundred percent realistic Fortunately, it's only a game, and nobody cares. Right, getting pretty close. Oh, don't hit something getting pretty close. That I have a bad habit of doing that. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. We are running, is it uh, GTX? No, GTM. We are running the GTM Custom Emergency Vehicle Beacons, and I have to say, I think they are beautiful at night really do like them. I like the accuracy too. Like if you look up in front of us here, this pilot vehicle has blue and red up top and that's what's showing on things as it goes past to the side. And then it's got the yellow in the center and that's what's showing out the back of the vehicle. Now the shadow placement obviously is a bit off. 
because that is an SUV, so the shadow that those yellow lights cast would be much further back. But you know what? That's, uh, that's one of those ticky-tack details. I think those lights look great. I like all the GTM stuff. We have a truck mod from them also, the 378 and 567. One of our Peterbilts is a GTM mod, and I think it's really, really good. It doesn't have a lot of slots. doesn't have a lot of, uh, well, I feel like the this Viper is always going to be the ultimate example of uh, slots because it's got it's got slots everywhere like I've never seen so many slots this is a little uh, a little dicey I can't really see what's on our left over there I mean I can stay to the right as far to the right as possible and just hope for the best that's kind of what I'm doing didn't take out the sign fantastic Okay, okay, still doing good. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, it's too dark to see what's over on the left, but if it's going to fit, it's going to fit. So, you know what I mean? Just stay as far to the right as possible and then cut it and hope for the best. This is a little dicey here, too. Same deal, but just reversed. I think we're going to be okay. Where is our... Ooh, okay. Interesting. You seeing that? Hey, buddy. He says, stop. Okay, let's try to... We've done a lot of things third person. Let's try to make this turn in cab. So I don't want to hit the fence on the right. Well, I mean, I don't want to hit anything, really. So let's take this out as far as we can. Start to reef it around. Same thing over here. Now where is that? That's kind of in the center, so we don't need to go all the way to the wall. Try to straighten her out here. Jerk it back to the center. I'm gonna hop outside. Yeah, that was, oh, did we hit? Oh, man. I don't think... I mean, that's pretty wide. You know what I'm saying? With that... With the stinger and everything. How wide do we have to go? Yeah. This is turning into a bit of a tits-up. Well, I mean, we got it to the yard okay. I guess that doesn't really count. Okay. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, if I, if I pull it back far enough to the left so that it'll be centered, I feel like it's going to hook the stinger. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get it in here as well as we can. And if it doesn't give it to us, it doesn't give it to us. <sighs> All right, just back up just a little bit. Which way do we want this going? We want it going that way. Dicey, dicey. Sorry, I got so quiet. I'm, like, seriously concentrating here. And I can't see my stinger back there. Oh, oh, oh. I just saw it. I just saw the dialog box. Okay. Whew. Right. So. Wow. Okay, let's see how we did. Quite a bit of XP. Still got a ways to go to level up. 
there you go. That worked out all right, except for the last little bit at the end, but that happens sometimes. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out The Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of American Truck Simulator, and we'll see you next time. Take care now.